Hello, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to talk to you about building complex financial models for the analysis of real estate. In part four, we're going to add on some interest only math uh, because we want to make our model a little bit more complex. And then we'll see what we can do in the time allotted. I usually like to keep these videos to around 10 ish minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. I figure that's about all any of you can listen to. So uh, let's add something in. And if it runs 10 minutes, if it runs five, we'll see what happens. So first off, I'm on the model that I always use, the model, video number four. And I'm going to add in a little thing that says interest only, question mark. And I'll put in a one. And I'll make a note that one equals true and zero equals false. I like to use ones and zeros when doing if statements because I find it easier to write if something equals one than if something equals true. If for no other reason, then I tend to mistype the word true a lot more than I mistype the number one. And then I need an interest only period, which I'll make, say, 12 months. Now I go to the amortization schedule. I'm going to have a link to my assumptions page saying, is there an interest only period? And if so, how long is it? I'll go to the payment function. And the goal here is to make the payment function, to make the payment equal to the interest for the first 12 months, and then have it go back to the normal payment calculation uh, after. Also, before I do this, I want to clean up this page a little bit. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to just get rid of all the decimals because decimals after the dollar make it unneedingly complex. Uh, and then also I want to, well, that, that's the main thing I want to do. So let me go in here to the payment function. So first off, uh, I'm going to go here and where it says the size of the payment, I'm going to put in an if statement. I'm going to say if the interest only period is equal to one. In other words, if we're in an IO period and the current month we're in is less than or equal to the end of the IO period. And I'll put an and statement around that. So that's an and statement. The goal of an and statement is to say, um, sorry, let me clean that up a little bit. There we go. The goal of an AND statement to say is basically to return a value of true or false or a value of one or zero, basically to say if we're both in the interest only period and the current month we're in is less than or equal to the end of the IO period, then that is true. So if that is true, then the payment would not be the payment we were doing normally. The payment would be equal to the interest because again, uh, that's the whole idea of an IO period. The payment is equal to the interest and if not, we do the payment function the way we were going to before. So in this case, um, that's fine. I'll throw an extra parentheses around it because we want the if statement to be closed out by a parentheses. And now before I do anything else, I'll put some dollar signs on the H4, let the C11 float, dollar signs on the H5, the payment being equal to the interest, that will float. And then the payment function itself, I'm going to fix the rate and fix the AM warrant and fix what the initial payment, the initial balance was, and I'll press enter. This would then give me an IO period. I then need to drag this all the way down. That's just me highlighting everything and pressing control D. Control D copies the first cell all the way down, one of the lesser used functions. And as you can see, there's an I.O. period. Now, while I normally wouldn't do this, I'm going to do this just to break it for a moment um, to show you that, yes, I can make the I.O. period 6 or 4 or 0 or back to 12 and get the I.O. period to go away. As you can see, it's all working the way you'd expect. Now, I'm going to relink that back up, of course, because I don't want to control it from there. I really like to have everything controlled from the assumptions page. Um, and really just have this all be a bunch of cell references. That's how I like to work. Uh, by the way, um, just for color coding purposes, I like to make all my inputs blue. If I go back to the assumptions page, the quickest way to make the inputs blue is home, find and select, go to special, highlight constant values that are numbers, 
And if I do constant values that are numbers, everything on this page that's a constant and a number is highlighted, and I can make those things blue. And there they are. They are now blue. And again, that was find, find and select, go to special. It highlights cells that have a common theme, and then you can just pick the color in question, and now you can see my inputs are blue, and my outputs are still black and white. You may notice under the data tables, these are blue. Uh, those are just cell inputs. Those are not linked up to anything. Um, and there you go. That is how we would build a basic interest-only period in an AMWRT schedule. By the way, uh, in the real world, if you made it I.O., you would probably also shorten the amortization period. Uh, so right now it's 25 years. In the real world, you would probably do something like, hey, if uh, there is an I.O. period of a year, then make this, you know, 24 or something, and then I make that, you know, 24. Um, I didn't bother to do that here. Um, if I were to do it, I would probably do it from the assumptions page, and I'd probably have something like, uh, don't use the amortization period, use the adjusted amortization period or something like that. I could throw another if statement on that. For now, I'm not going to do that. I think that's making it unneedingly complex. Um, cool. In any event, that's how you add an interest-only period. Uh, so with that, let's take a break on this shorter video, and then we can come back again and add in more stuff in Part 5. Again, if you're interested in more content like this, or if you have any suggestions for additional content, please contact me at joshacarrealestate.com. That's shown up there on the, on the screen. Or if you'd like to attend one of my live classes, I run them every six weeks in New York City. If you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a webinar. I also deliver classes on-site for corporations and universities throughout the world. You can read more about it on my website at carrealestate.com. Thanks again, and keep on building better models.